Hello and thanks for tuning in. Today I want to share a few details on a Commodore 64 software project on which I've spent a few hours here or there during the past few weeks. It's my second game for the C64, at least in the century that is. My first venture into C64 game programming was a few years back when writing Slither64, which you can also see at the end of my last video, building a Commodore 64. I wrote Slither all in assembly. You can find the source code on GitHub if you're interested. For my next project, I switched to the C language using the CC65 compiler targeting the C64's 6510 CPU. Compared to a C compiler targeting a modern CPU, there are some limitations with CC65. Some are discussed on my blog in the post on porting the open source particle tickle interpreter to the C64. My new game project is inspired by some of my favorite classic games. First of all, Space Taxi, released in 1984 for the C64. In Space Taxi, you need to haul passengers from platform to platform to collect fares. The version you see here runs in an emulator on archive.org, and you can play it in your browser. Turbo Rocchetti is a two-player split-screen dogfighting game. Ships and projectiles are subject to gravity, and the more fuel and weapons a player loads, the more sluggish the ship becomes, which makes for interesting loadout configuration choices. This version of the game was released for the Amiga in 93. Crazy Taxi is a bit of a 3D version of Space Taxi, minus the space theme, maybe. It was released as an arcade game in 1999. I played the Dreamcast version in the early 2000s. Shout out to my grad school roomie Bruce, who was crazy good at it. The version I'm playing here is the 2011 PC release on Steam. Let's go back to 8 bits. For my C64 game project, I will pass on making it 3D. This is how the first cut looked. Maybe a bit less visually impressive than Crazy Taxi, but it's a work in progress. I created a screen with platforms similar to Space Taxi. The ship can turn and accelerate similar to Turbo Rocchetti. I've created the ship sprite graphics in a sprite. Note the double white pixels for the C64 multicolor mode. In multicolor mode, sprites can use three colors out of a palette of 16 plus a transparent background color. The same goes for the explosion animation.
A sprite allows converting the animation to a sprite sheet. The sprite sheets are processed using a Python script that converts them into data files that are linked into the C64 binary. To create the rooms for the game, I've used the free version of JarPad. The game currently uses standard Petsky characters, but at some point I'll add a custom jar set. With those preliminaries out of the way, I added support for multiple rooms. To keep things simple, the game does not scroll the map. Maybe I'll sort that out in a future version. Alright, this is how the game looks at the moment. The latest addition is to put passengers onto the map. Passengers are shown as little up arrows until I can create some better graphics. The bottom left shows the platform the passenger wants to fly to. I need to add those numbers next to the platform as well. Uh, that aside, the current destination platform is also highlighted in light green. Once the passenger gets there, the fare in the bottom left is added to the score. The sooner the passenger is delivered, the more fare is left. If the fare is still bigger than zero at the destination, then the player gets a time bonus. The game ends if time runs out. There is no limit to how often one can crash, and one probably will crash frequently. Now my fuel is low, so I need to fuel up. Without fuel, thrust can no longer be applied. Uh, this platform down here is a little gas station. This up here is platform number three. Okay, that did not work. Okay, 10 seconds left on the timer. Time is getting close to zero. Okay, that's it. I've run out of time. That's uh, all for today. As always, thank you for watching.